I've been wanting to make this video for a long time. Getting an AI to rewrite Ash Ketchum's story is an idea I had before this YouTube channel even existed. When Tom Scott released this excellent video earlier in the year, it moved back to the forefront of my mind. The AI that he used in that video, OpenAI's GPT-3, sadly wasn't something I could easily access, so again I put it on the back burner. Then, a few weeks ago, Doug Doug posted this hilarious video using an AI called InferKit, and after a bit of messing around with it, I realized my idea could finally become a reality. So, for a very brief explanation on how InferKit works, well, it tells you right there. You type some text in, and a neural network will generate more. For example, if I type, Ash, Misty, and Brock all tripped and began tumbling down the hill, it can follow that up with, well, whatever this happens to be. Then, if you're not happy with that, you can delete its response and try again to get something like this. You can generate responses from anything between 100 characters to 1000 characters, and now that you know that, let's get into the new canon version of Ash Ketchum's journey. Oh, I should also say, this is my pitch for the plot of that new Netflix live-action Pokemon series that was announced. Okay, let's get going. We're just gonna give it a nice, simple prompt to start. Ash Ketchum wakes up on the day of his 10th birthday. After arriving late to Professor Oak's lab, there was only one Pokemon left to choose. With his right hand, he draws a Pokeball. Yes, give me the Pokemon. Professor Oak hands the blue and gold Pokeball over. Ash looks over the card and reads out the name, Eevee. The Pokeball rattles and red light turns white. The Pokemon releases a small purple creature with five spikes on its back. The Pokemon opens its mouth wide in response to Ash letting out a shrill sound. What does Eevee sound like? Eevee. Ash picks up the little thing and holds it in his arms. His father comes- Wait. Okay, Ash's dad is in this story. His father comes over and gives the boy a hug. Congratulations on your 10th birthday, son. I'm happy that you picked Eevee. Okay, so I guess in this particular universe, Eevee has a shiny form that's purple. The spikes, I'm just going to assume they're like tufts of fur. So a shiny Eevee. Ash is starting with a shiny Eevee, I believe is what they're trying to tell me. Ash bids his parents farewell and then heads off down Route 1 with Eevee in tow. Hoping to catch a new Pokemon, Ash stops at a vendor on the highway where he overhears one young boy asking another if his parents had ever brought home a Pikachu. Ash asks to buy the kid a Poketch, which Ash does, then watches him run off into the distance with his new accessory. Ash gets on a carriage with a maiden and her ugly horse, only <laughs> to get off when the carriage driver makes a comment about Eevee. Ash leaves with a new sense of purpose as he drives off into the night. Is Ash driving a car right now? Ash passes the playground that he had used as a young boy and thinks back to his days playing at the playground before the days of his mother's death. Oh my god! <laughs> So much is happening with Ash's parents. He remembers how he had wanted to call her a witch and explain his strange behavior. He remembers how she would tell him not to be rude and to, we have to press on with this, and to keep his mind on the other kids. He remembers his father telling him that the worst thing his mother ever did was going to bed with another man when she was young. This is completely wild. <laughs> this is not, this is not what we were trying to, I was trying to get a Pokemon. Ash remembers the days of his mother's funeral when a woman offered to help her bury her. As the woman walked off, Ash was surprised to hear the woman screaming for her husband, only to be cut off by the woman's scream for him. Ash quickly shoved his hand into his pocket to return his father's bl <laughs> bloody poketch to him, only to have the poketch be buried as well. Ash turned his back to the woman as the woman screamed for her husband and for her life, knowing that Ash didn't have <laughs> the heart to listen. I think we have to stop this section here. We didn't really get very far. We just learned that Ash's mom is, it, she's dead. Delia passed away in this universe and Ash grew up with his father. It's quite traumatic, quite different. We didn't really progress the story. Well, that is backstory. It's building the backstory up so you, you're more invested in the characters as we push the story forward. Okay, we really want to get the AI back on course here, so Let's, let's try to move on from the backstory. Enough about his parents, though. As Ash neared Viridian City, a wild Pokemon caught his eye. Ash sent Eevee out to battle the... Hopefully we're gonna get some story with actual Pokemon now. The wild Lapras, but found himself quite surprised by its swift moves. Ash quickly rushed to his partner's side, but realized that she couldn't fight back. Not only that, but Ash couldn't help but compare the wild Lapras to Ash's Pokemon. All right, Eevee, it's up to you. The trainer let his friend take her position on the field, taking a deep breath. Eevee, use bite! 
Evie closed in on Lapras, hoping to close in on it in one blow. But Lapras grabbed onto Evie's tail, knocking her out in the process. Ash, <laughs> Ash couldn't help but laugh, though at the same time he found himself worrying about Evie. Good. Could her tail possibly have a weakness? Okay. This is good though, we've got a Pokemon, let's, let's try and push this forward. Although Lapras had knocked out Eevee in a single blow, Ash decided to throw a Pokeball at the wild water type and hope for the best. The ball shook once, then stopped. Lapras's tongue appeared, licking his lips. With one swift moment, he bit down on the Pokeball, crushing it instantly. With, <laughs> with his jaw open wide, Lapras roared into the night. My, my humongous plan! I knew! Ash tossed his head around, trying to find Lapras. The Thunder God was nowhere in sight. Did you see him, Lapras? Ash said desperately. Tell me where he is. The Water God roared one more time and disappeared. So, um... I, I don't think he caught the Lapras. But that's okay. That's okay. You know, he tried. And that's the main thing. There's usually not much to do in Viridian, so I'm just giving it a free, pretty open prompt in Viridian City, Ash and Eevee and we'll see what it thinks they do. Stopped at the Pokemart to pick up supplies. As they strolled the aisles, each smiling, Eevee was tickled to hear Ash reciting the infamous catchphrase he often used while battling Pidgeotto, though now he seemed to be battling too. Be you, Eevee. Be you. How do you keep finding such good moves to keep such a great thing? Don't you think it's a little vain to call yourself a great, 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 great... whatever? Ash tilted his head. What's your point? Evie smiled and wrapped her tail around his ankle. Isn't it amazing how a legend changes? So, much like Meowth, this Evie can talk, as could the Lapras. Talking Pokemon, a lot more common in this particular universe. I mean, Pikachu talked that one time. Maybe that's more of it. It's more like the trainer forms a bond and can hear the Pokemon. Uh, it's tough to say, but that, <laughs> that didn't tell us much. We really need to lead the AI in the direction of Ash getting a new Pokemon before the gym, so... On his way to Pewter City, Ash encounters a wild Pokemon while exploring Viridian Forest. After a fierce battle with his Eevee, Ash succeeds in catching a... Pidgeotto, and naming it Jesse. Ash arrives at Pewter City to check on his Pokedex report. Finding out that Jesse is a flying type, Ash thinks of naming Jesse as a flying, flying, fly type Pokemon, while naming Jesse the next thing he sees in his Pokedex. Ash then heads off to Pewter City for the next step in his journey. On his way to Pewter City, Ash stops at Nimbasa City. That is a long, <laughs> that, is a, that is a real detour. Where he chats with Tracy and meets Caitlin. While buying a TM, Ash reveals that he caught Jesse from Pewter City and discovers that Jesse is a flying Pokemon taking the TM in his Pokedex, ending his comment about, what was his comment about, which let him finish his content, Jesse being a flying Pokemon. Okay. So he now has a Pidgeotto named Jesse. He briefly went to Unova, you know, as you do, and he bought a TM, possibly to teach to Eevee. But I mean, this is progress. We, we have a new Pokemon. If the AI writes something, then, you know, we're committing to it. So... As Ash enters Pewter City, he decides to teach Eevee a new move with the help of Jesse the Pidgeotto. Ash uses the TM for Shadow Sneak on Eevee, but a sparrow flies by and hurls the stone into Ash's leg, calling him to lose his balance and fall. Okay, pretty confusing paragraph, but Eevee learns Shadow Sneak, and that's the main thing we need to take from this. We need to be happy that the AI came up with an actual move. That is something. I feel like we're ready for the gym now, you know, Eevee's learned a new move, we've got two Pokemon. It, it feels like we're in a good spot, so... Ash arrives at the Pewter Gym with his two Pokemon, Eevee and Pidgeotto. The Gym Leader? Will they recast the Gym Leader in Pewter? We don't know. The Gym Leader, Whitney, welcomes him in a hostile manner. Her fear is evident. No one arrives with bad intentions. Ash wonders what she could be afraid of. He knows Whitney, a champion trainer, has had her fair share of tough battles. Ash hopes to find a way to ease Whitney's fears and find a way to impress her. The gym is a large, castle-like structure. It is used to train wild Pokémon. Ash, along with his two Pokémon, enter the gym. The room is covered in Pokémon badges, trophies, and gold medals. Within the chamber, Ash sees a different image of himself, though. In the image he sees, Ash is handsome. That's a bit of a depressing look at Ash, um, and how he feels about himself, you know? 
not feeling great about himself right now, but that's okay. We have recast the pewter gym leader, Whitney. Is it the same Whitney from Goldenrod? Can't be sure, probably. Brock is no longer here, so let's see how Ash can do against Whitney, I guess. Okay, I feel like we need to be a bit more specific for gym battles. I can't just let the AI lose its mind and start talking about nothing. I'm bottoming it out. It can only generate a hundred characters. It's still going to be making all of the big choices. I just don't want it to try and ride a whole battle by itself because I've, I've tried it and it doesn't work. <laughs> it gets very confused about what Pokemon exist, who's got what Pokemon. It's just a mess. So we're starting off. We're just trying to find out what Pokemon Whitney is using. To start off his first gym battle, Ash sends out Eevee as Whitney calls on her Umbreon. Eevee picks up her speed as he goes to battle for the first time in this battle. See, it was already starting to lose the plot. But the important thing is, Whitney started off with Umbreon. Okay, you know, let's try and let's try and get this going. Ash's Eevee and Whitney's Umbreon both showed great strength, but there was only ever going to be one winner. I'm honestly just trying to get the AI to tell me who wins this battle. The Eevee went flying to the sidelines and managed to scoot back on its tail while Ash shook his head at the loss. Okay, that that makes sense, you know, Umbreon is Eevee's evolved form. It fits that it would defeat Eevee. This is a two on two battle, so we're okay. Jesse the Pidgeotto can still claw this back. Pidgeotto replaces Eevee as Whitney recalls Umbreon and sends out her second Pokemon, Oddish. Okay, that's really good news for Pidgeotto. Ash's Pidgeotto and Whitney's Oddish take the field and attack one another at the same time. The Oddish fires off a dart as Pidgeotto lands on the ground, but the dart misses its target as Whitney throws an Oddish in the air to attack. However, Ash's bird dodges the attack with ease and throws a mud bomb at the Oddish to try and finish it off. When the dust clears, Ash realizes that Oddish has survived the attack. The Oddish fights back against Pidgeotto with Tailwind. Although Ash's bird counters with Tackle, the Oddish resists the attack and picks up speed. Meanwhile, Pidgeotto decides to finish off the Oddish with Head Slash, and after dodging its first attack, the Oddish gets hurt and tries to flee into the trees. Stop trying to run away. The bird then tries to reach the Oddish by leaping, but Oddish takes the opportunity to duck and avoid the attack. Pidgeotto's follow-up attack misses, and Ash's Oddish, Ash does not have an Oddish, continues to get closer to escaping. However, the bird hops back onto the field and lashes out at Oddish with Head Smash, damaging it and knocking it out. The main thing here is that Pidgeotto won. So it's all level. Umbreon knocked out Eevee. Pidgeotto knocked out Oddish. It's all coming down to Umbreon versus Pidgeotto. Let's see how it goes. Both down to their final Pokemon, Ash and Whitney share a look and then call for attacks. Ash instructs Pidgeotto to use Head Smash as Whitney calls for Umbreon to use Faint Attack. Umbreon uses Flash. Oh, that's disobedient. Both Pokemon transform instantly to the Pokemon from their dreams. Umbreon is a Shadow-type Dark Pokemon with red eyes. Head Smash hits Umbreon, but only inflicts minor damage. Umbreon survives the hit, but ends up missing the attack. Umbreon starts to glow and flickers, but can't get close to the Shadow Pokemon. As the two Dark Pokemon swap positions, Umbreon is defeated by Head Smash. Umbreon faints shortly afterwards. Whitney and Ash seem extremely disappointed that they haven't been able to defeat both Pokemon in a battle. W what? Why, Ash, stop being disappointed, you just won. The tension is interrupted by Brock. <laughs> Wait, what's Brock been doing? He's been there the whole time, watching the battle from a distance, too nervous to enter the battlefield himself. Brock suggests that the grass Pokemon should fight to let the light Pokemon live. However, Whitney doesn't seem to like Brock's idea either, so she argues that Umbreon should take its place. Honestly, I think we can leave that one there. The battle was a bit confusing. Pidgeotto transformed into the Pokemon from its dream, you know, as, as you do. We can't really be sure what that is, but it did defeat Umbreon with a head smash. The AI made that abundantly clear, I thought. Um, so there you go. Ash has, well, let's, let's see what Ash has. Take this, Ash. This is the badge you get for defeating me here in Pewter City, Whitney says. It's called the Red Badge of Courage. Maybe you should use it. Ash just shakes his head looking worried. I won. <laughs> that was a perfect amount to generate. Thank you, AI. Okay, we're going to do something a little different and see if the AI can generate a list of what happened between Pewter and Cerulean. So... On the long road from Pewter City to Cerulean City, three major things happened to Ash, Eevee, and Pidgeotto. One, Ash lost his first battle. This shocked him to the core. He couldn't believe it. He was no longer <laughs> the champion of Kanto. He lost to this small trainer with a cute Pokemon. 
he wasn't even able to land a single hit. Eevee evolved into Vaporeon. She won't stop evolving, that's what she keeps telling me. Pidgeotto evolved into a Pidgeot. He is no longer defeated by a trainer. Wait, we don't need to carry on. Two major events there. Uh, well, I mean, Ash... <laughs> Ash is no longer the champion of Kanto. Obviously, a tragedy. Eevee evolved into Vaporeon, and Pidgeotto evolved into Pidgeot. Okay, that's pretty big. Yeah, okay, we're in Cerulean. We've got a Pidgeot and a Vaporeon now. A really important piece of information we need before we can move on is, um, what color is Vaporeon? Ash's purple Eevee had evolved. Now with Vaporeon, the water type's coat was a shade of pink, and his ears stood out to either side of his head. We have a pink Vaporeon, which I think is actually the color of Vaporeon Shiny. So that completely gels with what we said earlier about Eevee being shiny. It's time for the AI to decide who the Cerulean City Gym Leader is, so as he entered Cerulean City, Ash met the local gym leader, Flint. Ash thought that a battle would be good for some fresh air, so he had a one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, works for me. Flint is the Cerulean City Gym Leader. Is that Brock's dad, or is that the Sinnoh Elite 4 member, or is it somebody completely different? We may never know. Before we can get into that battle, we need the AI to determine what exactly Flint will be using. For the one-on-one -on -one Cerulean Gym battle, Flint tells Ash he'll be using his strongest Pokemon, Feraligator. Feraligator, top, versus Growlithe, bottom, don't need to know that. Let's just, let's just, he's using Feraligator. Let's leave it at that. Okay, we need the AI to decide Ash's Pokemon, so Ash can only choose one of Vaporeon or Pidgeot to face Feraligator, and ultimately decides to use the latter. They reach Feraligator and still bicker in the beginning. Then Feraligator says, What do? That'll do. Thank you. Ash's Pidgeot versus Flint's Feraligator was a battle for the ages. Ash knew that even though the Feraligator was faster in the start, his Pokemon was older and had more experience. And that's what happened. As Feraligator slowed down, Pidgeot was able to fly at full speed and hit the opponent dead on. Feraligator had no time to react and was hit squarely. He was knocked out. Ash was both surprised and relieved. Pidgeot, no! Ash said, stopping his Pokemon. Okay, Ash just does not know how to react to a win. You've got the win, accept it, be happy. That's another gym badge. We don't know what it's called yet, but we're gonna find out. But there we go, Ash has beaten Flint. Good work, Pidgeot. Here you go, Ash, Flint growled, handing over a badge. For defeating me here in Cerulean, you've earned the wild badge. Ash took the badge with a very relieved smile. He smiled in relief and handed it to... Let's just assume it's his badge case, because who else is he handing it to? So we've had the Red Badge of Courage and the Wild Badge. I'm liking the badge names, the AI is absolutely killing it on that. I'm sort of just forcing the AI to give us a new Pokemon at this point, because it definitely needs some coaxing with the prompt. We can skip the whole journey to Vermilion City, the only moment worth noting was Ash catching his third Pokemon. A Poliwag, which he named Proud after his dead father. No! Proud Ketchum is dead? God, the AI didn't even mention it. Oh my God, Ash is an orphan. That is horrible. Let's ignore the part about Poliwag being kidnapped. We'll just, oh, can we? let's see quickly. The poor baby was kidnapped and barely survived a DGH. What? <laughs> Let me Google DGH, because I don't even know what that means. Okay, according to Google, it's a Directorate General of Hydrocarbons. It's the Indian Governmental Regulatory Body under the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas. So I think they kidnapped Poliwag. But more importantly, Ash's dad died? That's a real tragedy. The AI giveth and the AI taketh away. Let's just see if this works. In a three-on-three -three battle in the Vermilion Gym, Ash's Vaporeon, Pidgeot, and Poliwag defeated Shroomish, Larvitar, and Hitmonchan, respectively. Okay, that actually works. We probably need to know who those Pokemon belong to, so the Shroomish, Larvitar, and Hitmonchan belong to the Vermilion City Gym Leader, Elizabeth's nephew, Jonathan. Jonathan was very obsessed with Pokemon and was his gym's guardian. He had Vermilion City's gym beat on every challenge. The two Pokemon were already perfect. Sorry ladies, but I need to make an appearance. Mister. Okay, Jonathan. Elizabeth's nephew, Jonathan. Of course. I feel like we needed to speed up the process a bit. The last couple of gyms took a long time, so this was good. We got it out of the way quickly. Very important that we do this, obviously. By defeating me in an official battle, you've earned this badge, Ash, Jonathan squeaked. It's called the... 
Spirit Badge. May I see it? Yes, Ash exclaimed. What? <laughs> Jonathan rushed forward, pushing Ash back. Of course he did. That's fine. The Spirit Badge is a good name. It works with the Wild Badge and the Red Badge of Courage. Between Vermilion City and Saffron City, Ash adds a fourth Pokemon to his grown team. It's a Togepi, a baby frail version of a Togepi that is placed in the care of Professor Oak. Okay, Ash has got Togepi now. A baby frail version of a Togepi, I should say. Although it sounds like he's immediately sent it back to Professor Oak, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, I'm like an hour into this recording session and I've only got the Togepi thing, so we're just gonna go for the gym. I tried to get the AI to come up with something happening in Saffron City, but it, it was very confused. Ash mostly just left the city behind or went to the Elite Four. On one occasion, Misty was his girlfriend and she died, but um, none of it really made any sense. So with that in mind, once he reaches Saffron City, Ash heads for the local gym where he meets the gym leader, Silent. The two decide to battle and Ash wins. All right, this is my first time trying this prompt and we're literally already through the gym. Ash beats Silent. That absolutely works. As it's the only thing that the AI is having any real success with, we're gonna keep on naming the badges. This is your prize for defeating me, Silen said, handing Ash a badge. It's called the Orange Guardian's Badge. Take it with pride. Ash received it and put it on the front of his shirt. Perfect. Okay, so we've had the Red Badge of Courage, the Wild Badge, the Spirit Badge, and the Orange Guardian's Badge. This really is the AI's specialty. This prompt is pretty open, the AI could go for a person or a Pokemon here. On his way to Celadon City, Ash encounters a Ghastly in the trees above. Ghastly proceeds to attack Ash, but he's saved by Misty, who uses her electric current to stop it. Ash and Misty discuss the matter in the cave. Then both Ash and Misty head to the city. The police arrest Lance for the murder of Silen. <laughs> oh no. At least Ash got to battle him first. The Magistrate announces the verdict. Lance is guilty. Misty is shocked. Ash feels guilty too. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what to make of that information, honestly. It's kind of bizarre that Silen came up again so quickly. I guess this is the introduction of Misty to the story. The AI brings her up quite a lot, but I'm not sure she's actually made it into this story yet. At least we made it to Celadon. That's... something. After attending Silent's funeral, Ash and Misty head to the Celadon City Gym together. It's there that they meet the local gym leader, Lenora. When Ash caught a glimpse of her, he was stunned at how beautiful she is. Lenora wore a black dress with a pink vest. She is six <laughs> She is six years old. Do you have a dream to participate in the World Cup? She asked Ash and Misty. Yes, I do. I never won a cup, but I definitely want to win one during my journey. I have a few dreams myself, like becoming the Indigo League and champion. I have many issues with this, just t too many issues, but let's ignore parts of this and just take on board that a six-year-old named Lenora, possibly the same Lenora that we know, is the gym leader in Celadon City. But wow, troubling, troubling. But yeah, you are on thin ice, AI. The youngest gym leader in the history of Kanto, six-year-old Lenora battles Ash with her Pikachu. When asked why she uses Pikachu, Lenora simply states, Pikachu has a heart of gold. Okay, that's pretty nice. Let's see who Ash is going to use. Against Lenora's Pikachu, Ash can only choose one of his four Pokemon. Vaporeon, Pidgeot, Poliwag, and Togetic are all weak against Electric-type Pokemon, though. In the end, Ash decides to use Vaporeon against Lenora's Pikachu. He uses Volt Tackle and its barbs make Lenora's Pikachu un. Good. Okay, so Lenora's Pikachu will face Ash's Vaporeon. As a six-year-old, Lenora is not the most complete battler. Her Pikachu takes on Ash's Vaporeon, but is quickly defeated and thrown into the water. At about the same time, she and her Pikachu were attempting to cross a narrow wood bridge when Vaporeon dashed in front of her and stepped on her tail. Okay, couple of questions. Why is she trying to cross a narrow wood bridge during a gym battle? And also, why does she have a tail? Despite her despair and humiliation, Lenora does not consider herself to be anything but an outsider. Okay, Ash beat Lenora. I feel like I sort of manufactured that one, but you've got to think a six-year-old isn't going to be very good at battling. I mean, the AI needs to know that. Lenora walks towards Ash and places a badge in his hand. This is proof that you defeated me. It's called the... Marionette Badge. 
I'm honored, Ash replies, being able to use the highest amount of energy. I'll just leave it there. The highest amount of energy. Oh, in hindsight, I should probably... I'm honored, Ash replies, being able to use the highest amount of energy. I feel like marionette badge is surprisingly appropriate here. Again, the AI is just knocking it out of the park on these. All right, it's time to move on. Misty tells Ash that the closest gym is in Fuchsia City. She also lets him know that the nearby Safari Zone presents a great opportunity to catch Pokemon. To cut a long story short, on their visit to the Safari Zone, Ash catches a Wild Duo. It's a better Pokemon than Pikachu, burn on Lenora. I'm sorry to say this, but it's time to cut the man a little bit of slack. He does seem to be cut from a different cloth from the rest of us. He may be a clumsy chap, but there's no denying that he can catch Pokemon. Sure, he prefers his wild birds, and maybe even birds are more his than Pokemon, but I still don't think he's the worst. This just reads like the AI trying to defend all of the decisions it's made. It's, <laughs> it's a very defensive few lines. But Ash caught a Dojuo. That's another Pokemon weak to electric types. I guess that's his thing now? In Fuchsia City, Ash and Misty cross paths with the town's new gym leader, Jasmine. Ash faces off against the sexy coordinator and gets a little suspicious of her. The AI is clearly keen to keep up Ash's weird fascination with the gym leaders. Anyway, the Fuchsia City gym battle sees Ash's Vaporeon, Pidgeot, and Doduo facing off against Jasmine's Haxorus, Dragonair, and Alakazam. The Fuchsia gym leader Jasmine welcomes all challengers. Okay, that's a pretty gym-worthy team. She is unquestionably better than Janine. Alright, we're gonna see how the AI does with a prompt for a full matchup. The battle between Ash's Vaporeon, Pidgeot, and Dojuo, and Jasmine's Haxorus, Dragonair, and Alakazam lasts almost an hour. It continues even after two hours, and Ash finally wins. Okay. The stage then has the credits. The battle between Ash's Vaporeon, Pidgeot, and Dojuo, and Jasmine's Haxorus, Dragonair, and Alakazam lasts almost an hour. It continues even after two hours, and Ash finally wins. The stage then has the credits. Bit weird, went for a little repeat there, but it did give us a piece of relevant information, and that is that Ash won. Jasmine admits defeat and hands Ash a badge. You've earned this. Every trainer that beats me in a gym battle gets this badge. It's called the... Power Badge. Jasmine tells Ash that she will not be waiting for him at the end of his journey. Okay, makes sense. I don't know why she would be waiting for him. We've got a lot of ground to cover with this prompt, so I've gone for... When Ash and Misty learn that the Viridian City Gym Leader is still absent, they stop in at Pallet Town on their way to Cinnabar Island in the next gym. At this point, the town is full of painful memories. After visiting his parents' graves, they leave Pallet Town behind. On the journey to Cinnabar Island, the couple learns that, due to the constant interference of Team Rocket, the leader of the Viridian Gym, Bruno, has resigned and refused to rejoin Team Rocket as their leader. Ash and Misty travel through Route 23, Route 24, Route 25, Route 26, Route 27, Route 28, and Route 29 to reach Cinnabar Island. It seems like a very <laughs> long journey to get there. At this point, he has to work on breaking his rival's ban on him and another Pokemon battling. Okay, so Bruno was a former Team Rocket leader, or possibly just a former Team Rocket member, but due to their interference, he has resigned his spot as Viridian City Gym Leader. So, I wonder who'll be there when Ash returns. I feel like it's about time for a new Pokemon, we've gone pretty far without one, so... In Cinnabar Island, Ash catches a wild Sandshrew, and names it Sandshrew after Sandstorm, Ash saw as a trainee in the Pokemon Gotta Catch Em All contest. Okay, very creative nickname, I like it. That takes Ash's team to five. Ash then meets the Cinnabar Gym Leader, Gary Oak, ooh. Ash later agrees to visit the Pokemon Center in Cinnabar to heal his Pokemon and Oak. I don't feel like I should continue that. The AI tends to go a bit off the rails when you push it past just one thing. Let's see what team Gary Oak is going to be using, though. The Cinnabar Gym Battle will be a three-on-three -three battle between Ash's Sandshrew, Poliwag, and Vaporeon, and Gary Oak's Haunter, Gengar, and Jolteon. The predetermined move pool for the battle hasn't been announced yet. Okay, there will be a predetermined move pool for this battle. Pretty good team for Gary, I like that. Let's see how this goes. The battle between the challenger Ash's Poliwag, Sandshrew, and Vaporeon, and the gym leader Gary's Haunter, Gengar, and Jolteon truly lived up to the billing. But in the end, Ash's Poliwrath proved victorious. Poliwrath didn't have much trouble. Ash was more prepared. I guess she could get a little tired, said Karen Bloom, his mother. Bloom said she was very proud of her son for sticking to his original plan and not changing his Pokemon during the match. 
Moments after the match was over, Ash said he was just glad to have gotten the win. He added that Poliwrath, which he gave up on earlier in the day, was a tough Pokemon to defeat. According to the school district, Ash and his mother were honored to visit school for the day. Okay, a lot of information there. It sounds like Poliwag evolved into Poliwhirl, and then Ash presumably used a Water Stone to evolve it again into Poliwrath, mid-battle. Not sure that's entirely within the rules, but Poliwrath seems to have swept Gary? Also, and I guess it kind of makes sense, as he's 10 and both of his parents have passed away, Ash has been adopted by Karen Bloom, I guess? Not sure yet if he's going to change his name to Ash Bloom or stick as Ash Ketchum, but I'm sure the AI will tell us if it comes up. Gary congratulates Ash on his win and then hands him a badge. This is a token of your victory. It's called the Indigo League Badge. You now qualify for the Indigo League. Congratulations, you've earned this. Alright, so I guess because Bruno resigned in Viridian, you now only need seven badges to qualify for the Indigo League. I'm just sort of trying to figure out what the AI is going for here. With Bruno gone, there is no gym leader left in Viridian City, so everyone who's earned seven badges has qualified for the Indigo Plateau Conference. Knowing that he'll need six Pokemon to compete there, Ash goes out and catches a shiny Rayquaza from the statue near the gym so that he'll have an upper hand against the gym leaders. But even with that advantage, the trainers at the Elite Four Summit can afford to be kind to Ash. The Elite Four members look at the boy as a young hero who's made it far. It's not. You know, it's not. Probably didn't need to continue that on, but Ash caught a shiny Rayquaza to go along with his shiny Vaporeon. This is a pretty cool looking team right now. Once he arrives at the Indigo Plateau, Ash enters the conference and has to compete in the preliminaries. To make it to the finals, Ash has to win four battles. Ultimately, he advances to the finals, but not without some controversy as he lost to Pichu. Pichu in the end succeeded in what he set out to do, which is get all the Pokemon to finish a battle. What are the odds that he'll win? I don't know, I guess we'll find out. In the Indigo Plateau Conference round of 16, Ash takes on Rainy while Green takes on her sister, Shade. In the end, Ash defeats Rainy and advances to the quarterfinals to face Green. Ash does not use Pikachu in this battle, but instead uses his Blast. Good, it's good to use your Blast sometimes. So Ash has beaten Rainy and Green has beaten Shade, presumably two of Joaquin Phoenix's sisters there, and they will face off in the quarterfinals. Speaking of, for the quarterfinals of the Indigo Plateau Conference, all the battles will be full six on six battles. Ash's Vaporeon, Pidgeot, Poliwrath, Doduo, Sandshrew, and Rayquaza will be taking on Green's Tropius, Dino, Rhyhorn, Magnezone, Politoed, and Electrode. If Red wins this game, he will advance. Well, if either of them win, they'll advance. That's sort of the nature of the tournament. Let's see if it can deal with a full battle. The AI tends to get very confused with these. The quarterfinal battle between Ash's Vaporeon, Pidgeot, Poliwrath, Doduo, Sandshrew, and Rayquaza, and Green's Tropius, Dino, Rhyhorn, Magnezone, Politoed, and Electrode goes down to the wire. Ash begins leading by a small margin, while Green's team is all over Ash's. Green begins to close in on Ash's team, but Ash steps up and battles. The battle is another close one, with Ash regaining the lead by a few points and only needing one more win to progress. Only a few fights later, Ash is victorious once again, regaining a solo lead over Green's team and winning the battle. Ash advances to the semi-finals. Not only is Ash victorious, he is victorious over his rival for the first time. I guess Green is one of Ash's rivals that the AI has just failed to mention. Well, let's see who Ash is going to face off against in the final four. In the Indigo Plateau Conference semi-final, Ash faces off against Mira, who is accompanied by her Garchomp and Blaziken. Ash taking advantage of the pre-match hype. And we'll leave it there. That's a pretty good one. We didn't just get his opponent, we also learned two of her Pokemon. Let's find out the rest. In the intense 6 on 6 semi-final battle, Ash's Vaporeon, Pidgeot, Poliwrath, Doduo, Sandshrew, and Rayquaza go up against Mira's Garchomp, Blaziken, Infernape, Torterra, Sandslash, and Terrakion. Doduo was first to be used and Snorlax took full. I think we can see how Mira made it to the semi-final. That is a pretty decent team. Alright, I know the writing is a total mess at this point, but I really have to mention all the Pokemon involved just so the AI has a chance of actually figuring out what's going on. 
Ashes of a Porion Pidgeot Polyrath Dojuro Sanjuro in my closet, take on mirrors, Gachomp, Blaze Cannon, Infernate, Torterra Sun, Flash and Tarachion, and the Indigo Plateau Conference semi-final. When the dust settles at the end of the battle, Ash's team has advanced to the finals of the competition. The other semi-final matches were Team Aqua and Team Magma battling it out for the title of Best Team in Kanto, and Inke fighting Grovile for the title of the Best Pokemon in Johto. Both those teams and those Pokemon seem very confused as to where they're actually from. That's okay though, the main thing is Ash has made it through to the final. I don't think he's going to be taking on the entirety of Team Aqua or Team Magma though. I guess we'll see. I want the AI to have as much room as possible on this, so I'm giving it a nice simple prompt. The Indigo Plateau Conference final match between Ash and Giovanni was seemingly ruined when both coordinators used Flash and let their Pokemon hit the ground, effectively finishing the match. The two continued to bash each other with umbrellas, bludgers, hoses, and other strange equipment. In the end, Ash's Umbreon overpowered Giovanni's Gengar. When Gengar tried to escape, Ash killed it with a pistol. Ash and the Pikachu were both arrested? Oh god. I mean, that is some end to the Indigo Plateau Conference. I'm not sure Giovanni has even been declared the winner here. It seems kind of up in the air. I guess Giovanni wins the Indigo Plateau Conference? But more importantly, what happened to Ash? For the brutal murder of Giovanni's Gengar, Ash Ketchum was sentenced to death. Of course he appealed, stating how the Gengar that was killed had been his friend. It was all a lie, but the jury found him guilty and Ash was to be executed. Ash chose to fight, knowing that it was wrong for him to die for something that was a mistake. He knew that his only way out of the situation was to kill Giovanni. Ash fought and defeated the prison guards. He was almost at the door of the cell to Giovanni's when he was shot and killed. His last words were, Are you satisfied with your work, Giovanni? Maya and her friends heard the shot. They rushed into the cell to find Ash with his mouth on Giovanni's neck. What is happening? Ash had bit Giovanni to death. And the end was no longer in sight. Ash's friends saw that he had died. Maya hugged him and whispered that she loved him. Well, who saw that ending coming? The AI certainly went for a much darker take on Pokemon. I don't feel like I ever set it up for this sort of story with the prompts. I certainly wasn't trying to, but you know, sometimes you just gotta tell your story and I guess the AI's was a horrible murder revenge sort of plotline that it saved really right until the end. I wonder what Karen Bloom thinks of all this. Well, there you have it. That is what the AI thinks the story of Pokemon should have been. It certainly made some interesting decisions. I don't really see how we could continue on from there, so... Alright, that's the end of the video. This is the outro. I think this concludes the video. Thank you for your attention, and I hope you have a great day. Shut up. Don't think you're good? If you think you're good, I wouldn't be here. Because I'm famous, and you're not. Okay, yes, you're famous. I don't think you're good. You could be. You think you could be. You'd be amazed at what you can do. Say a little prayer and open your mind. That's right, prayer.